What's up everybody, Daniel Day back again with another video for D-Day Gaming, and today I want to spend a few minutes sharing my initial impressions with you guys of my latest and greatest gaming related toy. What is it this time you might ask? This time it is this fancy schmancy Elgato Gaming HD60 Pro Capture Card. I have had this thing for about a week and a half, played around with it quite a bit, really really enjoying it, and I figured it was high time to go ahead and get this initial impressions video put together for you guys. So hopefully you're into that sort of thing. I know I am. If you are, stick around and we will get into it right after the break. Okay, so like I said in the intro, I have had this thing for about a week and a half at this point and so far have been incredibly impressed by it. This card is really truly just an absolute beast. Uh, but I should probably point out that this is not my first capture device from Elgato Gaming. That honor goes to this guy right here. Uh, I've had this for quite some time. This is an Elgato Gaming HD60, which is an external capture card that runs over USB 2.0. And honestly, I have been incredibly happy with this thing right up until the point that I got this guy right here. So you might be wondering to yourself, if you're totally already happy with the Elgato device that you've got, why in the world would you spend the money and bother upgrading? Fair question. Uh, you know, primarily the big difference between these two cards is capability and the bus slash bandwidth that is available to this guy as opposed to my older HD60. And again, my HD60 is no slouch, but as I mentioned, it runs off of a USB 2.0 bus and that inherently has some limitations to it. USB 2.0 has not been the standard in quite some time. So for instance, this one can capture video at a significantly lower bitrate than this guy can right here. In fact, this actually has been upgraded. Uh, when I bought it, it was the latest greatest thing on the market, but Elgato actually came out with something called an HD60S, which runs off of USB 3.0, which is much, much faster. And it adds some really, really cool features, but it also takes a couple away that this one had. And so, you know, looking at that, doing the comparisons, uh, you know, I have stuck with this one up until this point. And more importantly, I really didn't have an option but to stick with an external device until recently. Some of you that have been following my channel for a while have probably noticed that up until about a week and a half ago, uh, we were a Mac only household. There were no Windows devices, no gaming PCs in my home. But a week and a half ago, when this guy showed up, Conveniently, almost like I planned it this way, uh, a new gaming PC that I ordered arrived as well. And so that meant that I finally had access to PCI Express ports so that I could use something like this. I've actually been looking at this for quite some time, been on the fence about buying a gaming PC. Uh, you know, do you do it? Do you not do it? Um, and uh, so finally, when I decided to take the plunge, I immediately hopped on and ordered one of these as well. For those of you Mac users out there, you are probably already well aware of the fact that PCI Express ports are not exactly something that you commonly come by uh, on your average Mac. So up until the new gaming PC arrived, I had to use something that plugged in over USB 2.0, USB 3.0, but now I finally have options. Now, remember a minute ago, I mentioned that the HD60 and the HD60S share a lot of the same features, but there are some key differences. You gain some things, you lose some things if you upgrade from this to the HD60S. Not so with this guy. Uh, this capture card, if you have a PC that can run it and can keep up with it, is kind of the one capture card to rule them all. It has all of the features of the HD60, all of the features of the HD60S, all crammed in to this one card. And uh, I have gotten to play around with all of those features and they are great. And this thing also actually does a few things that even the HD60S can't do. Uh, uh, most specifically, if you care about the quality of your captured video, this guy right here can capture it 60 megabits a second, which is higher than even the HD60S can do. And let me tell you, if you've got a display to play that stuff back on, uh, that video is gorgeous. It's ginormous. You better have many, many, many terabytes of free hard drive space if you're planning on capturing eight hour gaming marathons regularly. But uh, wow, wow. Yeah, super, super big, but super, super high quality. Okay, so now we have covered why I decided to upgrade. So how's the experience been over the last week and a half, right? Uh, you know, it's been great. Um, as far as packaging and all that stuff goes, could not be simpler. Uh, you know, really not a whole lot to say there. You, know, you get the card itself, there's an HDMI cable in the box, a little bit of uh, uh, printed documentation that comes along with it. Uh, one thing I did want to take a minute and point out though that I thought was a really nice touch is that when I opened this box up, I discovered there's actually two PCI shields in there. So what that means is for those of you that have a small 
form factor computer, one of the really, really skinny ones that won't accept a full PCI Express card slot. You don't have to have a big hole on the back of your computer. You can just pop off the included shield that's already attached, the standard sized one, and pop the smaller one on and throw it in your computer. I thought that was a great thing to include in the package. Setup could not have been more simple. Um, I didn't actually even need to install any drivers before turning the tower back off to install the card or anything like that. I had done a little bit of research up front and they had pointed out that yeah, you can totally just put it in your PC and download the drivers and that later. And that is in fact exactly what I did. Like I said, new gaming PC in this showed up same day, got the new gaming PC out of the box, popped the side off of it, popped this bad boy in, put the side back on and booted it up no problems at all. So then I go to Elgato Gaming's website, download their free Game Capture HD software, which conveniently kind of acts as a hub. You can actually build overlays and stream from that software. You can manage your Game Capture from that software. And on top of that, uh, the drivers and all of that are included in that package as well. So you download one package, install it on your computer, and uh, it wanted to do a reboot after that, and then I was up and running. It was literally that simple, just took a couple of minutes. Now, one thing that's nice coming from a Mac platform is that the Game Capture HD software is basically identical uh, on both sides. Uh, there is not feature parity, mind you. There are a lot of things that you can't do on the Mac that the PC version of the software allows you to do. Hopefully that will change at some point in the future, but uh, I was already familiar with it, which was fantastic. I already knew where to click and what to do and what settings to tweak and all of that. And since I got the new fancy schmancy gaming PC with the GTX 1080 in it and the Core i7 and all of that fun stuff, I just cranked everything up to maximum and just started streaming uh, and capturing at the same time. Uh, and it worked just fantastically. Uh, I did not have any problems out of that. Now your mileage is gonna vary. Obviously this capture card is crazy powerful, but you've gotta have a PC that can kind of keep up with that. Mine is a bit of overkill, admittedly, for just streaming and game capture. But I figured, hey, if you're gonna do it, do it right, right? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, like I said, setup was a breeze. I was up and running in no time. Have not had any issues or hiccups out of this thing uh, in the week and a half that I have been using it. But hey, this is an initial impressions video, not a full on review. I have to spend quite a bit more time with this guy before I can deliver that type of video for you guys, so maybe more on that in the future. But I did want to point one thing out before I wrap things up. You know, this has been a glowing initial impressions video up until this point. Uh, one odd thing that I've been running into that I figured I'd point out for anybody that was curious, I'm hoping it's just some setting that I have not uh, selected appropriately. But one of the features of this and also the external HD60S is the ability to do something that Elgato calls instant game view. And what that is, is the preview window that you see your game in, along with all of your like streamer overlays and all that fun stuff, the lag has been dramatically reduced. Basically on this old one, the preview window is not something that you would ever want to actually try and play out of because there was a multi-second delay between what happened on your television and what happened in the preview window owing to the fact that this thing ran on a USB 2.0 bus and you know, it's just not that fast, right? This one doesn't have that problem. So you literally can play directly out of the preview window. They advertise that, I was a little bit skeptical. I thought there's no way that the lag is so reduced that you could actually play out of the preview window. It's gotta introduce enough input lag that I would notice that. And honestly, I haven't. It's been great. You can totally play right out of that window. And for some people, that means they can actually forego a second or third monitor and just play out of the preview window, which is also super awesome, because like I said, all of your overlay stuff is there present in the preview window. And so that means, for instance, if you are piping your Twitch chat into your stream where it would show up for viewers to see, that's popping up in that window too. And you can make that window go full screen, which is fantastic. Here's the thing though. <laughs> um, and again, I hope it's just me in some dumb setting. But the preview window, it is instant. It is that fast. It is amazing. It's not 1080p though. Uh, it, it is absolutely not 
full HD. And again, I don't know if that's just some setting I need to change. It is instant, but is significantly lower quality uh, than what is actually displayed on my television. Now, I thought initially, because I've got a 4K Samsung gaming monitor, that perhaps that had something to do with it. So I set the resolution on this thing to 1080p. The same output that my Switch or Xbox One or PlayStation 4 was outputting, and uh, it, it didn't get any better. So then I tried actually running the capture card out into the television so that I could see the preview window on my TV because I thought maybe my new monitor's kind of cruddy, right? I mean, it looks great for everything else, but maybe it's just not built for this sort of thing. But it's looking great right over here on my 4K TV that's just off screen. Yeah, so I ran the preview window into that full screen. Yeah, it, it looked cruddy there too, super pixelated. Um, uh, uh, not unplayable, mind you. I don't wanna overstate um, uh, that reduced quality there, but it is certainly nowhere near the original quality, at least in my case. But here's the weird thing to me. Uh, I did a lot of searching on the internet trying to find a solution to that problem, and I could not find a single person saying that they had that problem at all. I've done a lot of Google searches, people, and uh, uh, it's just not out there. And I thought, you know, surely in all the reviews for this device, because it's been out for a while now, it's new to me, but it's existed for a bit. Um, surely somebody in a review even would have mentioned that yes, it's instant, but it's lower quality than what you're actually outputting to your other monitor or the TV. And it's not in there. I, I couldn't find it. I don't know what the deal is. Now, mind you, that is not the primary reason that I bought the card. It's just icing on the cake. So if this is just as good as it gets. That is totally fine for me. And for people that aren't super, super picky about graphics and all of that, they probably wouldn't even mind. It's not so bad that some people might not even notice it. Um, I tried keeping it from even going full screen, thinking maybe if you just had the app full screen-ish uh, 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 and it was just in the preview window that's basically about a quarter of the screen, maybe that would help. Eh, it's grainy there too. So not 100% sure what the deal is, but I find it very, very peculiar that uh, no one on the internet has mentioned it. And that's what's got me thinking. Maybe it's some setting on my PC. Maybe it's something there because surely somebody would have mentioned this, right? Uh, so yeah, not getting a whole lot of help from Google in trying to correct that. But again, not a deal breaker, just figured I would point that out. Um, if any of you have run into that problem and know of a solution for it or just have run into it at all, please let me know in the comments section below. I'm beginning to feel like I am alone here. Okay, so I suppose this is as good a place as any to go ahead and start wrapping this video up. If you have made it this far with me, I just wanted to say thank you, I really appreciate it. And uh, wanted to give a special shout out to my subscribers, you guys rock. And for those of you that are watching this that aren't subscribed to my channel, maybe poke around, check out some of the other videos. And if my particular brand of rambling is your cup of tea, maybe consider subscribing. It is totally free for you. It helps me out quite a bit. And it totally makes my day when I find out that I've got a new subscriber. Uh, for those of you that would like to find me other places on the internet, you can follow me on Twitter at that D-Day guy. And I also stream video games, you know, with the new capture card uh, to both YouTube gaming and Twitch. For YouTube, you have already found me. If you don't want to lose me, click that subscribe button, right? Uh, and if Twitch is more your thing, my username there is D-Day on Twitch. I do want to point out that this video is the result of a viewer request on Twitch over the weekend, wanting to know if I do an initial impressions video of this device. So if you've got any video ideas for me or any questions about this, anything you want me to test out, let me know in the comments section below. Like I said, I really, really enjoy engaging with you guys and talking with you in YouTube chat. Twitch chat, all of that fun stuff. So once again, everybody just want to say thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next one.